All right, folks, the NYPD says Sean Diddy Combs is not under a secret criminal investigation. Uh, that was uh, a result of a uh, police spokesman yesterday saying that was the case. Uh, they came back today and said that is not true. This was on the heels of an explosive federal lawsuit filed against him by a former girlfriend. Her name, she goes by Cassie. Her full name is Cassandra Ventura. She filed this lawsuit accusing him of physical rape, abuse, and sex trafficking. The 35-page lawsuit filed in Manhattan's federal district court is full of disturbing allegations. It describes Diddy blowing up uh, a man's car, Kid Cootie, after he learned that he was romantically interested in Cassie. The suit says Combs forced her to have sex with male sex workers while he watched, masturbated, and recorded the incident. Incidents that also later said he encouraged her to drink excessive amounts of alcohol and abuse drugs while first forcing her to get illegal prescription medications for him. She released the following statement about her suit. After years in silence and darkness, I'm finally ready to tell my story and to speak up on behalf of myself and for the benefit of other women who face violence and abuse in their relationships. With the, with the expiration of New York's Adult Survivors Act fast approaching, it became clear that this was an opportunity to speak up about the trauma I've experienced and that I will be recovering from for the rest of my life. New York State's Adult Survivors Act allows sexual abuse victims to file civil suits against their alleged assailants after the statute of limitation has expired. Now, Diddy's attorney, Ben Brofman, released this statement. Mr. Combs vehemently denies these offensive and outrageous allegations. For the past six months, Mr. Combs has been subjected to Ms. Ventura's persistent demand of $30 million under the threat of writing a damaging book about the relationship, which was unequivocally rejected as blatant blackmail. Despite withdrawing her initial threat, Ms. Ventura has now resorted to filing a lawsuit riddled with baseless and outrageous lies aiming to tarnish Mr. Combs' reputation and seeking a payday. Now, her attorneys accuse and say that Diddy offered them a eight-figure settlement, but that was turned down. Jacqueline, I want to start with you. It's a whole lot there. And again, for the folks out there to understand, this is a civil lawsuit. It's not criminal. Uh, and so that's a whole different matter, uh, different matter here. But it also lowered the threshold to actually prove the allegations, correct? Now, I will start off by saying I'm a licensed attorney in Georgia. I'm not licensed in New York. But generally speaking, um, and certainly in Georgia, the burden of proof um, in um, Georgia for a civil case is preponderance of the evidence, um, whereas a criminal case is um, um, beyond a reasonable doubt. So there's a big difference between the two. Uh, Matt, this, when this drop, uh, the New York Times dropped this story, uh, and man, it exploded all across social media. Uh, then all of a sudden, the folks began to, uh, make other statements, other individuals who accused, uh, uh Diddy of things in the past. Uh, you know, this, this is one of those, uh, stories that it has everything, uh, for entertainment media, sex, drugs, uh, abuse, uh, you name it, high profile individuals, rich folks. Uh, and so, uh, this is, uh, uh definitely one that people are talking about. Yeah, it, it is. And it's, um, it's tough kind of hearkening back to my comment earlier, you know, what we're finding is cases these days are prosecuted in the court of public opinion, especially when it's somebody like a music mogul, Diddy, and somebody who's a, an artist, a well-known artist like Cassie. I'll say this is a, a difficult, you know, thing to truly analyze because at, at the outset, he's not being prosecuted criminally, as you mentioned. But, you know, our legal system is predicated on the idea of, of innocence until you're proven guilty. This is not a criminal case, but the same principle, right? The lawsuit hasn't been proven yet. Um, so right now, these are merely allegations. However, we also know that there is a lot of abuse that happens in the shadows and that victims and survivors have to be supported um, because a lot of times things don't get reported. And when they have the courage to report it, you know, we should support them where the allegations are proven. But right now where we are is we merely have allegations that haven't been proven yet. And I think people are interested in these allegations, not only because of who's involved, but because of the subject matter. But I think we have to give them the gravitas that's necessary. These are very serious allegations. And if these things happened, then she was subject to just intolerable abuse, and he should absolutely be held accountable. However, 
he does have the right, essentially, even in a civil suit, to not be presumed guilt guilty until it's proven. So I think we'll have to wait until what the evidence shows. Um, but I will say, what is strange to me about all of these cases that we discussed is that every one of my clients gets an admonition day one. You don't say a single word anywhere without me about anything at any time. So it is interesting to me that there are this many statements, oftentimes from the parties themselves, because that, to me, is dangerous um, if you are in the midst of litigation. Uh, Suzette, uh, it was interesting uh, looking at a lot of these different comments. I saw some people who were saying that, oh, this is a money grab. Well, first of all, when you file a civil lawsuit, uh, there, are, there are economic uh, uh, pieces to this. This is also uh, one of those stories, uh, historically, uh, that rarely gets to the point of filing uh, an actual lawsuit because typically uh, folks want things like this settled out of court. Absolutely. I think even the existence of the Survivors Act shows the uh, change of attitudes when it comes to uh, victims or here alleged victims of sexual assault or abuse. Uh, we see now that uh, people are uh, have a deeper understanding that sometimes people do not come out right away. She was in a 10 plus year uh, relationship with Mr. Combs. And again, according to her, uh, pleading. Again, he hasn't filed any responses yet. This is what, in her version of the facts, occurred. So, again, I do agree that, again, he's innocent until proven guilty, but I do think the attitudes towards uh, people who have suffered, men and women who have suffered this type of abuse, uh, are changing. And that's why we see laws like this uh, being utilized in the civil uh, litigation side to say, you know, I have suffered this type of damage, and I would like to be compensated for it. So we'll, we'll see as things proceed. I don't know. There could be even a settlement. Sometimes uh, these things don't even make it to trial. But again, we are seeing more of a pattern where folks are a little bit more accepting of people not necessarily you know, coming out with allegations concurrently as they're going on, and people understanding a little bit more about why a person would still appear on a red carpet or go to uh, an award show or do all these things while still uh, purportedly being involved in such an abusive relationship. But yes, the allegations are scathing. Uh, the damage has already been done, I would say, to his uh, reputation. I think it'll be a very tall order to try to recover some of that ground in the court of public opinion. Uh, but we have to wait and see what evidence is presented. Michael, this uh, lawsuit comes, what, a couple of weeks after uh, L.A. Reid was hit with a lawsuit by former music exec Drew Dixon. Uh, this is the story that appeared in the New York Times. Uh, and again, this particular, uh, this particular act here uh, is, is what opened the door, the door for, that is the Adult Survivors Act. Yeah, Roland, you know, this is, um, I, I read the article from NBCNews.com as well as the one from the New York Times. And uh, I looked at a lot of these allegations. And r right now, it is true that these are just allegations, but this uh, these are devastating allegations. Um, I, I know you opened and talked about, uh, th you know, th these are maybe types of stories that some people like to hear or they're in entertainment. You know, these are sickening allegations, okay? But once again, this is a civil lawsuit has to be proved in court. Um, uh, preponderance of the evidence. So we'll see how this goes. One thing that's interesting for the people say, who say this was just a money grab, I, I don't know at this point, but uh, according to one of her attorneys, Douglas Wigder, uh, she turned down an eight-figure uh, settlement, um, you know, and she's uh, suing apparently for $30 million in, in damages. But uh, hopefully, we get to the bottom of, bottom of this, whether this is true, false. Some of the allegations are true, others are false. Um, but this is something that you really hate to see. John Quell, uh, the thing here, uh, you have a lawsuit filed against Diddy, but as you, as you read this here, uh, listen, it's a whole bunch of people who are in his world who are likely having to lawyer up as well because they may be called uh, for uh, depositions uh, if they were present for any of these alleged incidents. Yes, I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, and, um, you know, with this specific case, kind of um, what some of my um, colleagues have also said um, on the show tonight is that, you know, what we have in, case, in Cassie's case is called a delayed disclosure. And those are extraordinarily common 
um, during my time as a special victims unit prosecutor at the DA's office, where I prosecuted solely rape cases and crimes against women and children, um, majority of those cases um, were delayed disclosures. And sometimes some victims don't disclose, some, some disclose right away, and then some don't disclose for years, right? And then just think about the public nature of what's involved with, um, with who she is and who he is. And, and, and also, um, to kind of add to what he said about, is this just a money grab? Think about the, what she knows what she's going to have to go through by making these very, very public allegations um, against um, Diddy, or what now what he calls himself, ironically, what he calls himself now is love, which is ironic as it relates to the allegations that she is making against him. Um, and certainly, you're absolutely correct as it relates to um, um, the individuals that are in his camp or that may have been witnesses. Um, I suspect that uh, if this case does go to trial, that um, Cassie's attorney are going to subpoena all witnesses, um, whomever um, would be able to um, corroborate um, some of the things that she's been through. All right. Well, we'll see uh, what happens next. John Quote, we certainly appreciate you joining us on today's show. Thanks a bunch. Thank you.